The Jurassic Coast of Britain offers an astonishing insight into life on Earth around 200 million years ago. This remarkable stretch of coastline preserves all sorts of prehistoric marine animals, recording the life and death of these long since vanished creatures at this extraordinary point in time when great sea reptiles ruled the waves, dinosaurs dominated the land, and pterosaurs commanded the skies. Recently, the Bonehead's crew and I decided to go searching for the fossil remains of these animals near the town of Lyme Regis, a place with a considerable paleontological heritage and surrounded on both sides by beaches rich with traces of ancient life. Here's what happened. This is a, a Boneheads update. <laughs> We finally made it after many hours of traveling. We're we, here. we made it to the place. After intensive... Messing around with trains. It took way too long. Southwestern Railway, we, we, I just got a message for you. Thank you so much for canceling all your trains. It's just a little landslip, I'm nothing you can't handle. Said 120 quid to get here, come on. Oh yeah, well we avoided that, it's all good. The place is so nice. This is my room. Welcome. Welcome. We, we feel like actual uh, Victorian fossil hunters now. Yes, yeah. Um, it's very cool. Let's go see the chef's room. Chef's room. Chef, how's your room? Oh, it's good. Very good. Oh, let me hang up job. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Did you just trip on that? Yes! People rock here. Ow! Did you enjoy your trip? Go away. Where are you trying to go? Vanished. <laughs> yeah. This is Ben's room. So cool. This is my room. Yeah, we're all sleeping in here. We are. <laughs> we have a pet pigeon, which is pretty epic. Wait, have it? Oh, yeah, look, he's still there. I didn't see it. Didn't he looks really comfy. Oh, I hope he stays there the entire time. Oh my god, there's a. Guess who's in here? <laughs> Our <laughs> producer. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, producer. I don't see the pet pigeon there. Show the fossils. Oh, yeah, there's already been some fossil hunting here. Dangerous ropes. Hamza, I'm gonna slip. So, this is the downstairs region. Oh, it's so nice. This is our Victorian-esque kitchen. We are actual Victorian. Oh, there's an actual Victorian fossil hunter. This is our uh, pretend Mary Anning. <laughs> That's so nice. And then, and then we got, oh, window. yeah, fossils. Oh, yeah. Mary Anning herself, from 1808 onwards, lived on this site. Where the blue plaque was, is? Uh, yeah, blue plaque marks. Marks it, and that's now the it's Lime Regis Museum. It's not focusing. X marks the um, spot. But yeah, so this is Cockmoyle Square, and uh, it was, I mean, a lot more buildings kind of packed into the area back in the early 19th century, including the Annings house, the yes. uh, Richard Annings, I don't know how cameras work, Richard Annings um, cabinet making place, we should which they mention, also sold fossils out of. We should also mention we're living right above a fossil shop. We this are, is called so cool. the Fossilers Lodge. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the Fossil's Lodge. We get greeted by two giant titanites, ammonites. Oh, and an ichthyosaur. And an ichthyosaur. Literally just an ichthyosaur. So it's thing. promising so far. Let's, let's show the last room. <laughs> How do I get it off? <laughs> Are you stuck in your apron? Yeah. I didn't do that tight. I don't, I can't see. It will never be taken off. A proper a Victorian uh, drawing room. We're going to wake up to have Ben working very hard at that desk. Yeah. Well, we should probably record That's some working. discussions in here, I think. Yeah. This is probably where it'll be. Oh, Ben! Oh, Eddie, this is the perfect room. <laughs> Bonehead's castle. Oh, and the fireplace as well. I didn't even see that before. Cast room. Oh. Camera there. Yeah, Everyone exactly. Uh, Let me go to the Showing our fossil finds. Mm. And of course, just like the Victorians had. Okay, TV. Even though the light was disappearing quickly by the time we made it to Lyme, we couldn't help going for a fossil hunt down on the beach. Unfortunately, we'd already lost Eddie. Right, are you going to make me walk like this? Yes. <laughs> I can see her head. What does that mean? Right. You're hey, walking man. too fast. The struggle. Did you if you went to Mormon? <laughs> Where is he? Oh. Right. You, if you want me to walk in front of you. Look at the crops. Oh. Oh. Nice. Look at the crops. <laughs> 
That's where she can fight the police horse in there? Yeah. Oh, the backwards walk. The first day we lost Eddie. <laughs> Clearly, we were all very excited to start hunting. Could be the stuff in here. But it's probably like less likely to come out because of the sea defences. So like accumulating this area. Yeah. It's still worth looking. And it wasn't long before Eddie made the first ichthyosaur discovery of the trip. Eddie Everything just made the, the first good uh, discovery of the trip. A very nice little ichthyosaur vert. Yes. Um, yeah, it was just down just in, in um, this okay, pile over here. Uh, this. Like it, it, it was just down here, and it, it looked a lot like um, the fish verts are normally found yeah. during my dissertation work. And um, I mean, Ben yeah, Ben that. knows what this sort of looks like. It's definitely a vert. It's, it's a fossil. Oh, yeah. We can tell that. It's, it's the distinctive cool. ashtray shaped. Um, yeah. So you can see it's like it. concave on both sides. Yeah, and you, you can actually see. So there's like the these little divots here on the side. It's like a one of the uh, where the rib would attach to it basically and this divot at the top is where the neural spine would have been that was a really nice one. Oh yeah it's about what? about well it's less weathered than the one i've got i found oh, around okay. here about the same size but that's in a better condition so that's such a nice first find number one <laughs> of many number one of oh, many don't lose that As it finally got too dark for us to see anything anymore, we made our way back to our accommodation, ready for the first full day of fossil hunting. Day one fossil hunting, starting now. I got no comments, I'm too tired. The, oh, we only woke up at seven. Still tired. Yeah, so the, the tides are not good today. Let me just... The tides are not good at all. Low tide was at 10 to 7, so we woke up at 7, it's about 8 now. Yeah. Um, apparently the tides, Eddie's gone out for a run, so he's having a look at the tides already, and saying that they're already looking like high tides, so doesn't sound promising. Oh, but whatever is whatever. We'll, yeah. we'll hopefully find something. How are you feeling about the fossil hunting? Me? Yeah. I'm pumped! <laughs> I've got my headphones on, camera ready, I'm excited. It's going to be good. I'm going to find a neck thistle already, day one. I'm gonna find well, a dinosaur. Day two. <laughs> Skeletosaurus. I'm gonna find me a Megalosaurus. Oh, okay, I'm that'd joking, be interesting. I'm joking. <laughs> mammoth. Mammoth. <laughs> <laughs> See you, Mary. <laughs> so, um, we're here at Church Cliffs, Lyme Regis. So it's the Blue Lias formation, very early Jurassic in age. And um, yeah, you can see the distinct kind of interbedded limestones and shales, uh, these ledges. They've all got bed names. I don't know specific yeah. bed names, but lots of ichthyosaur fossils have come from these limestone beds here. The Tangian age, uh, um, yeah. 199 million years ago. I think going into the Cinemurian as well. I don't know that, part, I don't know that but early I know Jurassic stages. That within these uh, interbedded, um, cliffs you have bands of thick or black organic rich shales and they are actually signs of anoxia so if you don't know what anoxia is it's uh, an environment with reducing oxygen and it heavily affected the marine organisms trying to sustain a structural um, community yeah. and ultimately causing their death and then you do also find quite complete ichthyosaur fossils in the limestone beds themselves apparently and they would have had oxic um, like sea floor conditions mm -hmm. But they think that the way they're completely preserved means they were really quickly covered over with sediment in, uh, during storm events. Um, so that's why we find really nice fossils in the actual limestone beds. If we can get like a quick view down here, just from standing here on this massive slab of blue lights down there, you can see a ammonite on that massive slab there in the corner. I don't know if my finger's going to pick this up. Where is it? Where is it? Just about there is an ammonite sticking out. We're not going to collect it because most of the time these are too big to collect and it's just nice for the collectors and other people to come down and just have a look. Yeah. We don't want to ruin the scenery. So let's find an ichthyosaur. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've just found some pyrite. Now, as we had to do in a recent exam, explain the processes of pyritization. Well, what I'm going to say to Ben right now is no, I will not. Uh, so this is pyrite. 
This is um, fool's gold, they call it. Yes. So this is octahedral pyrite. And then right next to me, you've I've just seen it. Where'd it gone? So in Dorset, it has layers of pyrite, and it also has what the mine is called is beef stone or beef rock. Beef. I love beef. So if I don't know if you can see the banding. Yeah, a little bit. So it's a fibrous calcite, yes. right? So yeah. when they used to break this stuff down, they thought it looked like beef. <laughs> so that's why they dubbed it the term beef rock or beef stone. And they were very hungry, apparently. Yes, and what you have? Um, should we go see the Nautilus? Oh yeah, it was so a really nice. Came down just to like speak. So look, actually, just this shows how big beef can actually oh. get. Yeah, I always used to mistake beef for some kind of fossil when I came hunting here a lot younger. But uh, yeah, now I know that is not what it is. But so, I think a lot of people mistake it for that, yeah. Literally take a few steps down the beach, you've got this giant Nautilus. So sadly, because of the state of the Nautilus, we won't be taking this out, and nah. it's in such a massive rock, we won't be able to. Right behind Ben though, we have this giant ammonite. Oh, so you can see the suture lines and everything. These suture lines would represent um, body chambers, but not where the animal would be living though. So wherever the suture line stop on this bus, on this rock here, it looks like the suture line stops here. So that's where the extent of the calcite growth would occur. This would have been the chamber where the ammonite would have lived in. But we can't actually ex we can't actually see how far or how big the ammonite would have been because it's broken in half. This would have grown about here, could have gone about here. We can't tell. So we sadly have to leave this. Yeah. But there will be more stuff to collect. There definitely will be. We've got a ways to go. Yeah, so Hamza just pointed out there's some Phalasinoides trace fossils here. So you can see these structures. They're actually the, the burrows of the crustaceans, isn't it? Shrimp yeah. or something. That's really nice. Kind of a network of them here. You often find them, so this might be the underside of a bedding plane. Looks like a big limestone block. Can you find them on the, the bottom surfaces of them sometimes? <laughs> What have you got? I like see a crinoid stem. Oh, it's so nice. It's really pretty. Can you see the cross? Oh yeah, you can. The cross section and everything. Yeah. Kind of like the star the shape. Star shape, yeah. And so, yeah, it's interesting because they're animals, not plants. Mm -hmm. Even though they look a bit like, like plants. plants yeah. <laughs> and you find a lot of stems around here, but it's a really nice find. So, just on the foreshore here, picked up this chunk of rock. Looked on the other side. It's a nice eroded calcite ammonite. That's very nice, you've got a couple of them in there. Yeah, what I'm going to try oh, and do is knock the side to see if I can expose the other half. Yeah. Hopefully. Good luck with that. Thanks. Okay, so we're making a quick escape from the beach because we're about to get trapped because the tides are not great. Ham Hamza is not very happy. I'm in a very <laughs> annoyed mood. His, ham his hammer broke. Not good, it was new. Eddie, you've only just got here, how do you feel? Uh, refreshed. It is rather brisk. Let's get out of here before we cannot and we have to call the Coast Guard. Massive ammonite. Is it ammonite? Yeah. It's got stuff in it. Well, that's going to be infilled when stuff that's rushes so in. That's so cool. Looks like this gastropods and stuff. Is that crinoid stem as well? Yeah, we need to go. Yeah, so again, base of church cliffs, the interbedded limestones and shales and everything. And uh, there's the sea defences, and you want to be careful here, because as you can see, the tide comes right up, and uh, you can very easily get cut off. We've just about made it in time. A little bit hairy. Um, but yeah, not good tide times today, so we'll probably come back this afternoon, when the, uh, the tides are on the down. And these cliffs, it looks like there's been a lot of recent landslips actually, They're kind of terrifying. Uh, so you want to st stay away from the very base and just keep an eye on them as you're collecting. Ideally you should have helmets on, but don't actually have any with us. But yeah, we'll come back in a bit. Not too bad, found some ammonites and stuff, so... Okay, yeah, this could be interesting. <laughs> we should probably come a little bit sooner. Eddie is a good swimmer, to be fair. Should be okay. Come on, quick. We've made it. We did it. We didn't have to call the lifeboat, it's fine. Oh. Oh. 
Come on, I. Whoa! Let's take that one. No, I'm reading Attack environmental it. improvements. Okay, well, how do you feel about that hunt? Not happy. <laughs> no. I'll just play it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back this afternoon. We'll find better stuff. We'll, uh, we'll fix the hammer. Is he pulling out the hammer? I hear one break mine. What have you got? Oh. I have some rocks to break down with my forehead. <laughs> Wait, so what happened to it? So, I hit it, I must have hit it here, and it flung off. Oh, so you just put it back on. Yeah, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get some cloth, put it on top and try and smack it down, so that it's wedged in. Okay. Try to. I'm not standing next to him anymore. <laughs> yeah, that, it could be a dangerous game. Go the way. <laughs> Oh no! That's so bad. Is it just like glued on a little bit? Okay, see you. You leaving me? Yeah. You don't want contact? <laughs> this is so bad. Alright, I need my chisel actually. Okay, I'm getting cold, so I'm gonna go. Oh, okay. The seagulls are fossil hunting. Did you find anything? No? Okay. <laughs> okay, so we're looking at finds we've made. So you about to expose the ammonite? Yes, so this ammonite has not been exposed for the last 199 million years. So, let's try and open this. Whoa. Got Look at that. Part and counterpart. Whoa. That is very nice, actually. Did you also. just crack that off? Yeah, so let me just put that side stuff down oh, there. Oh, wow, look, you can see. There's another one there. The oh, yeah. But, um, can you open the bin, please? <laughs> so I can just brush all the stuff in. Oops, sorry. Cool. There you go. So, so nice. is this the colour of the outside of the ammonite, or is like this sediment you can pick it off and it'll be calcitic? So what happens is over time, minerals change. Um, we, I, I really do not know because I don't know my ammonites. But all I know is that I will need to like clean this up to actually mm. show the calcite. I think if I, because this crack here is running around all the way there, if I have a whack on this side, this should just break off. What's going on there? That, so that was just a counterpart of an ammonite here. Oh, okay. There's another one. Yeah, so it was just so much just a bit of a chamber that just broke off. But um, I'll be doing that outside. And um, I'm going to chuck this stuff away. I'll probably leave this on there. You're going to clean that. Oh, yeah. Add to the oh, old collection already up there. Sometimes when fossil hunting, people will disregard fossils because they don't want to collect them or they don't want to clean them. Have a look at this. My. Whoa. This is a just sadly disregarded fossil that no one wants to clean. I actually pyrite right in there. Yes. It looks pyritized and then covered in calcite. Yes. That's nice. But another fossil to show. This fossil has not been exposed for the last 199 million years. Let's have a look. Ooh. So oh. Very nice. Pyrite right again. Yes. And oh, you got some more on there. Yeah. Oh, cool. Oh, that's stunning. And someone left that. So was that from just splitting your nodules? Yes. Nice. So, when collecting in the, uh, um, you can all that. When collecting in the blue lights, you have float stones. I don't know the geology of float stones, I'll do my research. But the float stones are filled with ammonites. You find the cross section. So if I have this from Amelia, quickly, give you that one. Mm -hmm. So the way I noticed this was an ammonite was one chamber there, and there would have been another chamber here. Yeah. So the ammonites mirror each other. So you, if you imagine a... Imagine an apple, you cut it in half, the apple's going to mirror each side. An ammonite is the exact same, not technically an apple, but if you cut the ammonite in half, it's going to mirror. So I saw the two chambers, and I saw smaller chambers aside. Sadly, the way I've broken it, it's cracked there, but that's fine. Um, what I'll do is... I'll probably glue them back together and then prep the top. Yeah. So hopefully, if I can get the permission from the uni, I would love to do some... Um, videos on prepping. Oh yeah, we definitely need to. So, we can show the prep lab yes. at our uni. 
What's going on there? What's going on there? Welcome to Dorset. In there. <laughs> Later in the day, we decided to head out west from Lyme, walking onto Monmouth Beach, another great place for finding marine reptile fossils. It was here that I'd previously found some plesiosaur bones, so we were all very hopeful about what we might come across here. Look, there it is. Opening the top. What have you found, Hamza? So, we have an ammonite from the blue lice. Here is a top with its ridges. Here is what could be the mouth. Here is a cross section, and it looks like the ammonite is near complete. Sadly, there's a crack running through it, so prep job's not gonna be nice. But we also found a bit of bone right here, in this rock. Right there. So I'll let Ben explain what that could be. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks quite flat, so... My oh. I mean, I don't know, it's just a bit of a fragment of something, but it is quite flat. But, um... Here you go. Yeah, sorry. Yes, we had a bit of a change of plans. Instead of going back towards Charmouth, we've gone the opposite way. We're heading towards Monmouth. Uh, oh, we're on Monmouth Beach. We're on Monmouth, yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you turn around and look behind you, that is the famous Ammonite Graveyard Ledge. Yeah. And look at the beautiful stratigraphy of the Blue Lies Formation. Yeah, so... Found a tiny bit of bone so far. I don't know if I'll focus, but... You can tell it is bone with a distinctive um, like honeycomb texture. I'm gonna assume it could be a bit of a rib. The way it's kind of flat on one side is suggesting maybe it could be ichthysaur rib. It's gonna be the most common sort of uh, vertebra here, or tetrapod at least, marine tetrapod. So yeah, um, nothing particularly spectacular so far. I mean, that's nice, and the ammonite is really good. Yeah, um, Eddie, I need your pound hammer, sorry, mate. Yeah. So, we'll keep heading this way, see if we find any more, before the daylight runs out. Yeah! Who cares about these ammonites behind me, when you have the most beautiful shells that you can ever find on the Jurassic Coast? Look at those pretty ammonites! You have, down here, <laughs> you've got plagiostomas! Yeah, they're so fun. When we get past uh, the ammonite graveyard, hopefully tomorrow, or another day, we'll find more of these black, amazing, jet black ammonites. Um, I'm right, sorry, plagiostomas. So, um... I think the whole world can agree right now, Hamza, that those are the most fascinating thing. They are! I'm so happy you agree. <laughs> Pretty soon, though, it again became too dark for us to see much on the beach, and so we once again made our way back to the town and prepared to get up early again the next day. Okay, second full day of fossil hunting. What's the plan today? Uh, definitely some ammonites, maybe a couple more crinoid stems. Yeah. Um, a complete pliosaur. No, that that'd be nice. We're going <laughs> going back over to towards Monmouth Beach. Gonna go visit the Ammonite pavement, and uh, I found some plesiosaur remains there before. So hopefully we can find a whole one. Yeah, I'm not sharing. All right, sweet. But See you in a bit, guys. Go. Okay, literally just got to Monmouth. I'm so happy. Check this little patch of gravel here and immediately spotted a rather nice ichthyosaur vert. It's, uh, it's a little bit more weathered than the one Eddie found uh, the other day, but it's bigger. Uh, yeah, it's difficult to kind of see with the rib facets. It's quite weathered, but that's probably the top. And then that could be the bottom there. Might be like quite a, uh, quite near to the head possibly. I don't know, I have to wait for it to properly dry out, but yeah, very happy about that. Let's see what else we can find. Here are some of the dangers of the Jurassic Coast. Wait, well, I'm not a danger. He is very dangerous. No, there's a, it looks like what's been a very recent landslip here, just by the Ammonite pavement. Um, you can see a big excavation there. I just saw a few more pieces kind of dropping out uh, moments ago, so. We will be sure to stay away from the end of this. Um, yeah, just, there's a lot to be wary of when you're out frost hunting, especially on these very steep cliffs that there's no possibility of climbing to get to safety. Uh, tides, of course, are another danger. We're, we're trying to be aware of those. 
But uh, yeah, don't go close to the base of the cliffs, or that can happen. What you got? I have oops, uh, three ichthyosaur verts and oh, what's so cool. the, the neural spines all together fused. I mean, it's oh bit... yeah, it does. Oh yeah, there might be some. Is that bits of rib in there? I'm not sure. It's a bit mangled. Yeah. But the fact that they're together like that. That's nice. Look, pyrotized. Yeah. As well. A lot around here. Yeah. Oh, if you but... clean that up, there'll be yeah. some details in there. It must be That's pretty recent. Nice. And um, maybe there's another one out here somewhere for me. I hope so. In oh, there's more plesiosaur as well. Yeah, that's oh, that's awesome. That is really good. Oh, yeah, so these fun. these rock pools are kind of well. That's where I found stuff before, and uh, it seems to be where the best stuff is coming from now. Just in between the rocks on the foreshore. Let's go look. You've got ichthyosaur as well. Mm -hmm. That's I've got so cool. Ichthyosaur teeth. Yeah. So these are probably the roots. Yeah, it looks like it. So they've got like that distinctive kind of fluting. Yeah. And then kind of looks like the cross section you'd expect. It's quite interesting how like distorted it is there though. That's yeah. Quite I don't but know if it's... it's like almost looks like a couple teeth next to each other. Yeah, that's what I thought. Like two teeth fused together, and then that's like the inside of the second tooth yeah. there. One tooth, one tooth. Yeah. But I just found it in the rock pools. I'm nice. very happy with it. I've never found it. <laughs> that's such a good find. And Hamza's just got a vert as well, apparently. It looks like teeth. They are teeth. Yeah. So you got a vert? Yes, we have a Nicthysaur vert, complete one, with some pirate in the middle. Yeah. And then we have a broken one here, with the neural, with one of the rib attachment facets there. Um, I'm trying to find the other half. You think it's broken off somewhere here? Yes. Oh. Because that's a clean break. It. Yeah. Nice. So many Nicthysaurs here today. What's this? It is now raining. Very dramatic conditions to fossil hunt in. Yeah, I don't know how well it's picking up, but it is quite literally snowing as we're fossil hunting. This is an experience. <laughs> yeah, we didn't quite check the weather today. I didn't realise this was going to happen. Anyway, we made it to the Amalite pavement, so that's something. And we've got quite a lot of ichthyosaur. Why is it snowing? Okay, so we've made it to a place called... The Ammonite Pavement, all known as the Ammonite Graveyard. Yeah, so we did some work here back in April last year. Yes. We had to decide April 2022. how... 2022. Yeah, decide how they died, kind of measure them and uh, see how they were sitting. Yes. Yeah. So what happened here? So what you can see is you have infilled ammonites and you actually have calcitic ammonites. So this is a really good example actually of how the ammonite may have looked like because where this um, yellow is, where this goldish yellow, that's actually the mineralized ammonite. This is the body chamber. This is where the ammonite would have lived. You got this one here that's showing the different chambers. Oh, yeah. So you can see, you, you, you can't collect this stuff. This is a, it's a triple SI, it's a heritage site. You're not allowed to collect the ammonite pavement. But um, there's hundreds of thousands. You can see from how far, look the range of these slabs. So we all know it's this limestone. You can see how the beds are dipping down. There's hundreds to thousands of ammonites here. So I'll let Eddie explain so, more. Um, you may assume it might be a storm like we're currently in. <laughs> um, like with all these animals, you think it's the rapid burial, but it's actually not because um, if you look closely, it's a bit hard to tell in this weather. It was easier in April, but you've got trace fossils. Like you've got um, a couple there, so that would have been a U-shaped burrow going through. And there's a few flatanoids and other trace fossils around. And these traces tell us that, well, it was definitely decently oxygenated, so it wasn't rapid burial, otherwise it'd be anoxic. Um, and that they must have been lying there for a while uh, for them to have been burrowed into. So it's most li likely just suspension burial where like, you've got lots of ammonites dying over a long period of time and maybe you've got a bit of turbulence and then you've got all these ammonites that might have spanned like hundreds of years yeah. and have all been sort of uh, put onto one level from a bit of turbulence. That's very awesome. Yeah, it was fun trying to interpret what happened here um, and just do all of the the taphonomic investigation. So we're gonna have a look around in the kind of gaps in the pavement, look for more bone, 
That's what I found plesiosaur remains before, so probably won't stay off for too long. It's uh, interesting conditions now. It's snowing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So what we have here is a fragment of an ammonite, but it's a really nice one because ammonites are built like puzzles. You have these weird zigzaggy lines, and the ammonite keeps adding onto its puzzle in a spiral motion. So these are the chambers of the ammonites, so we call them sutures. And then next to them, you can see all these weird rectangular bits with lines running through. They're crinoids, cross-section crinoids. So sea lilies. Yeah, yes. we found a few of those, uh, like loose pieces. Yeah, yes. Uh, yesterday. So. Bit of an yeah. Was <laughs> it? Oh wow. They're very spiky. Sadly, the ammonite's too cemented. So. Oh. You're yeah, just breaking up and calcite ammonite there. Yeah, we we walked past someone who found it. We must have found it and broken pieces off. Yeah. So sadly, that one's gone. That's cool. You get oh, pieces well. of it. Yeah. Yeah, we're uh, deciding to walk back now. Just to say now, we haven't made it up. The weather has yeah. changed on us. So that was crazy. It was snowing, and then now suddenly it's sunny again. We're going to walk slowly back and fossil hunt through. Uh, these bits here, where we're finding ichthyosaur bones. So, wish us luck. Yeah. So what have you got? So, just looking at all this um, shingle, we found what looks like a just normal, ordinary rock. <laughs> but, to the untrained eye, it's an ordinary rock. To the trained eye, uh, if we can get some light on here, you see these glistening black, jet black flakes? Yeah. They're actually, they could be uh, Bellamite, Hooklet, or Fish Scales. So this is an Ichthyosaur Coprolite. Um, later on we'll explain the differences between Ichthyosaur and um, shark. shark. Yeah, yeah. We often found Shark. Shark Coprolites here that were attributed to Ichthyosaurs, but actually, they're probably not. But that is yeah. most likely Ichthyosaur. So what I want to try and do, probably get it cut and polished. And see what's Yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah, I've got a bought specimen that looks a lot like that, so we can be pretty confident that is what it is. Yeah, so all you have to do if you're coming down to Dorset, Get on your hands and knees and just look for the shingle. <laughs> yeah. The tide times were again not particularly great, and so that was it for our fossil hunting that day. The following day though, we were up early once more as we prepared to head over towards Charmouth. Last day, full fossil hunting. Woo! We're gonna find ammonites. Finally. Pyrotized ammonites. <laughs> How are you feeling? I feel a bit more happy today. That's good. We got this all yesterday. Yeah, just because I had breakfast this morning. So. Oh, that always helps. <laughs> uh, Eddie's going to meet us in about a few minutes or yeah. a couple of... Yeah, so... Boys on the grind set. Running. On the back burner. <laughs> yeah. Alright, sweet. See you in a bit. Where? Oh, yeah, it's going to get lower than that as well. So, weirdly, so we've already mentioned this before. Where that point is, that's golden... That's uh, golden cap, isn't it? Golden cap. Yes. And then if you go to the right, you get a divot, you get like a V-shaped valley. The beach next to it, the second point, is West Bay. Yeah. Recently, there was a cliff drop. Like yesterday. Yesterday. Massive one. Yeah. And literally, on the way home, I was speaking <laughs> to Ben, I was like, that place always has cliff drops. What did we see on the news? It dropped again. <laughs> yeah, pretty so scary. be careful on the Jurassic Coast. Always be aware. We won't be going that far, luckily. Okay, so <laughs> been collecting for what, like an hour now, maybe? Less than um, that, about 40, 50 minutes. Yeah, but we've been in this, so you can kind of see... Landslide. All this landslide here. Uh, there's actually quite a lot of Victorian age items. Yes, so you can... So, a lot of fun things I've given to Charlie over there. Uh, you can find um, little marbles, you can find Victorian medicine bottles, you can find alcohol bottles, you can just find a lot of sort of stuff. Amelia the other day found a nice teapot, we'll show images of that. Oh yeah, the teapot was really cool. We like, it's got the spout, it's got the handle, nice, probably a bit of a chip on the top. But if you look just all around, the tide is nicely out. If you look to the left, you've got that white barn over there, that's Charmouth. Yeah, I think that's actually the visitor centre, isn't it? Yeah, the heritage centre. Heritage centre, which is unfortunately closed. Um, we did want to go in there, but no, it's not open. Museums, fix Friday. your timings, please. Yeah. But um, yeah, so kind of in amongst all of this landslide, I'll see if I can find an example. There's patches of pyrite material. Um, okay. And you're going to find the things you found. Basically, it increases your chances a lot. If you search in this concentrated pyrite material, you'll find some really gorgeous pyritized ammonites. Size ammonites. And yeah. then you also get these size ammonites as well. Let me see if I can find a tiny one. 
My pocket is a mess right now. <laughs> yeah, I found quite a few of those. I'll show you the biggest one I found so far. There you go. Oh, so cool. Sadly, it's overfilled with the pyrite, so I could try my best to chip the pyrite away, but um, who knows? Yeah. Well, I think we'll continue on to Black Ben. Yes. What have you got? A lot of pyrite. Lots and lots of pyrite ammonites. Um, this is. Hang on, I'll get some nice ones out. The nice ones are the little ones. Oh, wow. They're gorgeous. Are so nice. Aren't they? This one's really cool because it's several oh, yeah. like, together. Um, and then this is the best thing. I wish it was complete. Oh my god. It wow. would have been massive <laughs> and it's stunning, but alas. Yeah, it's definitely worth searching through all of this stuff then. Oh yeah. Oh. And we're fortunate how low the tide is actually. Yeah. Okay, onwards. Whee! So, it's always nice to um, crack open a fossil or a rock and show with the audience what you're collecting. So this rock has not been exposed for the last 199 million years and thought decided to give it a bit of wax so I just looked to the corner of my eye and I just found this little this little pyrotized ammonite. Oh wow. It just shows it's how everywhere. phosphoriferous the Lyme Regis to Black Ven charm of way is. So let's have a look. Oh, nice. Was that even exposed at the edge or not? No. Wow. So that's a plagiostoma. Oh yeah. You've got two in them. There's the lovely ammonite, but the way I knew there was something in here, it's the cross section. It's not a good example. I'll show you. <laughs> this is a good example here. So yeah. these lines, these ridges here, these two circuits there, these smaller holes, these are ammonite cross sections. I think I explained it earlier, but crack them open, you should be able to find some uh, fossils. I'll have a close inspection of this, see if it's complete. If it isn't, then sad, we have to leave it. Mm, it doesn't look complete, so. Yeah, I'll, I'll leave this one. Hopefully uh, a nice uh, collecting for parrot. <laughs> we have an ammonite here Charlie found. We're going to see if we can have a crack at it. This is our first appearance of our producer. <laughs> I think she's been in it before, briefly. Oh my gosh, it broke the rock underneath. It might be best just to keep it like that. I find the wrong place. Oh no. Did you get it? Oh, you got like just above it. Yeah, so it's a crushed. So this ammonite has been squashed. Look how it's elliptical. Yeah. It's a deformed ammonite. Yeah, no, I heard a noise just now. I didn't realize that's what's happening. So if you look up there, that whole section of like light brown color that has literally just fallen. Hams was shouting at me to come bring the camera. Yeah, you can still, I don't know if it's picking up on the camera, but you can still see some movement up there. So uh, yeah, this is why most of Black Ven is just kind of slumped and collapsed. All right, hang on, I'll move around. That is terrifying. Yeah, I mean, that's, that is just what Black Ven does all the time. But wait, so that whole, like, not that the whole brown bit. No, there's vegetation there. That can't have just gone. But the bit to the so right. The bit on the right just dropped. Yeah. I'm just standing there and all I just <laughs> is like, bang. I heard the noise, but I didn't know what that was. Damn, that was scary. Still yeah, dropping. still bits falling. I mean, yeah, we're talking about the massive rock fall that happened yesterday on yeah. the way here. Again, just goes to show I need to be so careful of the cliffs here. So Luckily that bit's like kind of inaccessible anyway, but... The yellow, whitish, orange, brown is a Cretaceous strata. Yeah. And the grey is Jurassic. So there's a massive fault running throughout Dorset. It's the Wessex Basin. Well, there's there's going to be other faults, other, other um, uh, cuts of strata missing, but it's just mental. What? Mother Nature can really be like. Got a bit of um, limestone with some pirates in, and I just saw this ridge there. Thought we'd expose it. Ooh, very nice. Nice little prom. <laughs> oh, that's large chunks. Ah! 
Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, they hit me. Thank you. No. No. Oh, I think I just chucked an ammonite at you. Okay, so we just thought we'd uh, sort of introduce the geology of this area that we've been fossil hunting in. So over that way is Lyme Regis. There's the uh, sea defences we walked along. And then church cliffs, you can see all the distinctive bedding we talked about before. That is all the blue lias formation of the lias group, um, which is a lot like earlier Jurassic in age. And then where we are now, just standing in front of Black Ven um, and towards Charmouth over that way, the buildings over there, that's Charmouth. This is all uh, the Charmouth mudstone formation of the Lias group. Um, and then what can we see above it, Eddie? Oh, the upper green sand. That's right. From my notes. <laughs> yeah. So upper green sand and below it, the gold clay. The gold clay is also Cretaceous, yes. you know, lower Cretaceous. Um, so there's an unconformity. There's a big gap in time represented by like a, well, it probably was still being deposited and then weathered away. And now we have this huge gap. So it goes from early Jurassic rocks straight into early Cretaceous rocks. Yeah, you're missing, missing. the Weldon. Yeah, I think yeah. it's the Wessex Basin. Yeah. That's cut it all shorter. Because that's right. terrestrial stuff. That yeah. Ain't. So we don't know what happened to the dinosaurs here, but oh well. <laughs> yeah, for the moon reptiles. Yeah, I mean, they do find um, Skeletosaurus, uh, the Charmouth dinosaur, so basal thyreophoran, ancestral to like the armored dinosaurs, so related to both stegosaurs and ankylosaurs, and they found it over there in Charmouth, which is pretty cool. And from this direction, I don't know if you can see it from here, as we mentioned earlier about the cliff fall, you can actually see it from here. Oh yeah, you might be able to. You can, you see that? That looks like a rectangle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know if that's going to be on the camera, but, but uh, that's cool. Yeah, just shows yeah. what the naked eye could see. And we uh, witnessed a, well, you witnessed a massive cliff fall at Black Ven. Yeah, that was actually really scary. Yeah. yeah. You, get, you get a lot of slips because, as it says in my <laughs> notes, uh, you've got these hard bands of limestone which acts as slip surfaces for the mud. So, um, especially after some of the weather we've had lately where it's been like, you wouldn't think frost would, but once it melts, that's all um, making it very boggy and it's all melting and then uh, it's all slipping. So you get some pretty good finds from that slips. That's yeah. like a recent slip over there as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, a lot well, of um, well, ichthyosaurs well, known from here. The limestone over there, that would have acted as a slip. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a scary, scary place if you're up near the cliffs, but great for fossils. This and, is what Mary um, Anning would have enjoyed as well. Yeah, exactly. I mean, she-, she... all this harsh weather, harsh climate. It's been pretty nice today. To oh, be yeah, fair. it's been nice. <laughs> yeah. But could you imagine what it's like just like being here, trying to collect stuff out of the cliff. Yeah. Stuff dropping. You wish you could stick stuff out of the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so we're gonna head back now. Uh, it's lunchtime. We're gonna go and investigate those pyrite deposits again over by the, the new landslip. Um, yeah, it's been quite successful so far, I'd say. Lots of nice pyrite ammonites and belemnites now. So, good day. Uh, so we were warned about this. But the tide has now reached the end of the landslip. So we might have to climb around slightly. And there's a lot of rusty nails about. If we just go quickly, it should be alright. Okay, I want to put the camera away so I don't trip. Okay, we managed to make it around the corner <laughs> with only one minor medical emergency. Doctors in the house. <laughs> also in found some house. bottles. Victorian bottles, probably. Cool. So that was pretty much it for our fossil hunting adventure in Dorset. That evening, we decided to go through all of our finds and show off what we'd managed to collect. Hello, welcome back to this very special episode of Boneheads. We've been in Dorset fossil hunting for a few days and uh, we're just gonna kind of go through our collection, what we've amassed over the last four days now, is it, yeah, basically? Three days, well, three days, days of full hunting. Oh yeah. I found something on Monday. Okay, so um, obviously there's a lot of ammonites here. That's, I think, probably the most common thing we found. Yeah, we ammonites and bellamites are the most common fossils found on the dressing room. But actually, ammonites are- We didn't are. take most of the bellamites. No. Because 
That's Charlie actually has a really nice bellum knight. I don't know if we have it exposed on the I got some nice ones in there. Yeah, oh, give me a second. It's over there, I think. No, I think Charlie has the best. It is a number. Fairly decent That one. is a nice one. Can, we, can you get Charlie's one out? Um, yeah, do you want to search through there? So I you can see the one. cross section yeah. there. It's got like that sort of oh, yeah. whitish so uh, prismatic uh, calcite inside. And um, yeah, then you can get some like larger, like more bullet shaped, thicker ones. Oh, yeah. Those are pretty cool. Oh, shit, I'm getting I'm moisture all over that. my. Um, That's alright. Uh, Pirate of <laughs> So um, this is a Bellum Knight that Charlie found. It's kind of incredible because usually they like break up into sections about this big. So the fact that this stayed together is actually really Yeah, amazing. I can't believe she found that. It was rare. literally just on the on the surface, just lying there. It's amazing. I don't know how it broke because it's really thin as well. It's not like yeah. a chunky one. I think that must have been exposed quite fairly recently from the Bellum Knight Marl. Uh, it has group. to have been, yeah. Yeah. Um, on my so table, it's not as neat as everyone else's because oh. I've been breaking down the fossils. Well, not I've been breaking down the rocks so I can make them a bit more easy to carry. Um, I'm the one who's carrying more of the heavier stuff. So that's my um, choice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then don't they? If it's by choice, I'm carrying then nice stuff. Get to complain. I'm just carrying nice stuff though. So like <laughs> yeah. today, we saw this earlier in the video. I split this lovely ammonite. So don't uh, apologies for the not knowing the species. I want to say it's a prom. I don't think it is because the proms. So this is one I actually bought. Um, I thought it was nice, and I thought the place I bought it from they didn't actually clean it up as nicely. So I was like, um, why not buy it? So that's a prom. Right. Uh, you got two here. I've actually found these ones are really, really nice. Hamza, what is a prom? So a prom is a shortened term. I don't actually. I think it's. Promiseros, I don't actually know the full We'll, we'll just Latin go with Promiseros. Yeah, so, pro, so it's just a prom. A prom is a um, small, uh, is a type of ammonite, it's an ammonite species. So those are two I found. Oh, very nice. I really apologise to any um, ammonite specialists out there if I butchered the pronunciation, or if I actually butchered what the species of GCs are. It's okay, I'm not um, a specialist in this. I need to, I need to uh, have a look. But um, one thing, we've actually come down from Dorset Fall. Yes, Mary Annie collected a lot of ammonite, she collected a bellum knight, she collected, she collected a lot of things, but we're actually here for the vertebrate. We, we would like to have been here for the vertebrate material. Yeah, ideally, that's the, yes. the you ultimate like to talk one. To the king of vertebrates. Right? Yeah, do you want to cover what you've uh, <laughs> Well, I mean, found? day one, first oh. find. Yeah, so this is really nice. You can see the um, sort of bone texture, very classic Ichthy sort of vert. And yeah, Ben, you say this is like, uh, Fairly early on in the an animals, uh, probably yeah, uh, just kind of um, spine sequence based on where the rib facets are. I think we showed yeah. that earlier on. Um, yeah, yeah. But then my oh yeah, uh, piece, I, this might be fine. Find piece of the resistance. Find of the trip. So we've got three verts here oh, fused so nice. together with what looks like a bit of a, a neural spine, which you don't normally get. Yeah. And then maybe a bit of a rib. Yeah, uh, that's definitely some rib yeah. attachment. There's a bit there. of pyrite um, going on here, which isn't great. Um, so might have to try and sort that out. But apart from that, that is, I mean, I've never seen anything like that. That's absolutely fantastic. Yeah, that's so nice. You can sometimes get kind of like pyrotized, um, yeah. jaw, like fragments like that. So, so but that was really good. Speaking of, about pyrotized jaws, we're going to Amelia, who yeah. has what we think are roots of ichthyosaur oh. teeth. Oh yeah. That has nothing actually. to do with pyrotized. No, we're talking about pyrotized jaws. Um, so that, these yeah, we're about jaws, here we? yeah. are like two ichthyosaur teeth that are fused together. So nice. there's one here and then there's one there. This one is a little bit compressed and then there's some sort of bone material added on top. But it's it's a bit it's a bit difficult to tell what they are exactly, but we're pretty sure that they are ichthyosaur teeth. Yeah, they've got kind of the um, striations which are yeah, pretty indicative and, of it. And the cross section is quite indicative of yeah, it. Yeah, it's really nice. I've got uh, one ichthyosaur vert here. That one there. Um, not the nicest preserved it? one. Yeah, sure. Thank you. But you can see some rib facets, kind of. Um, and then this kind of un indeterminate fragment of bone. Yeah, like this this fragment of bone, not really sure oh, actually, what that is, but it's something. Yeah. Uh, could be, but possibly. Yeah, then, oh yeah, you got a pretty nice um. Oh yeah, nice bit of crinoid. So the the. So Can you see the cross section? Of yours? Oh, show your Not um great. single crinoid. Yeah, so that's well, an, I think so it's. A, oh, don't focus on the um. Yeah. Yeah, then show the other side of it. So crinoids are just um, so-called sea lilies. Uh, Not um. Couple myself. They look, look like we <laughs> plants, but they're actually animals. So yeah. this is another version of crinoid, but look how compressed. 
Well, it almost had it. Oh well. <laughs> well, anyway, yeah, yeah. what you're looking at is a compressed crinoid. Yeah. Just imagine a starfish yeah. and Not, you squish it. Yeah, don't normally see them come out as black. They're normally like this sort of white. Yeah, what it is is just clay on top. So. Yeah. Um, oh, actually, while we're clean. looking here, um, this is one of those um, devil's toenail we were talking about earlier. So, Gryphia. Um, yeah, yeah, I've got. Um, yeah. I like that as well. Uh, really nice. There's loads of examples of them around. Uh, they're pretty cool. The, uh, oh, you want to show off your verts? Yeah, so I have to. You saw their verts, here's my verts. I got two, sorry, got three ichthyosaur verts with a rib yeah. and what we think might be a paddle bone of an oh, ichthyosaur, nice. probably plesiosaur. We have no clue. Yeah, just the the kind of thickness of it, it, it looks like it probably is paddle bone. Um, so that's really nice. And then, oh yeah, a bit of rib as well. I've got. One of those. I also rib. possibly have yeah, a bit of rib. Oh, that's nice. Uh, we all got a bit of rib, um, not, not me. quite sure what this is. <laughs> yeah, lots, lots of little bits of bone. Not entirely yeah. sure they always are, to be honest. Going back to that uh, ah, yeah, crinoid stem. Ah, yeah, this we were talking about earlier. Oh, that's not a that is probably the nicest crinoid stem I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah so yeah. it's just like a single mm. ossicle, they're called, yeah, like the segment. Like a star. Yeah, and you can actually see like the cool cross section of it there. Mm. So I don't know how I spotted that, just in the shingle, but. Yeah. Quite nice to see you, ladies, if people haven't picked yeah, up yeah. on that. But, um, you might be able to so cool. Yeah, we so saw some in the field. Yeah, so as you can see, just a buttload of ammonites going on here. Have a look Got at this ammonite. It's a pyrotize with some calcite infilled ammonite. Yeah, you um, want to see that. Uh, I actually found it like this on the beach, so, um,. Yeah, I'll come yeah, over so in a second. That Amelia. should be nice. But yeah. if we head over to Amelia, Amelia yeah. actually has some. I want to prep that. I don't know what those. <laughs> Amelia actually has some really nice pyrotized ammonites. I do. <coughs> so I usually say ammonites are for boring people, but I. Until you find that many. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I've kind of fallen in love with pyrotized ammonites on this trip. Um, I don't know what it is about them. They're just so stunning. I mean, look at that. That's just. Right, um, I've got quite a nice selection. Yeah. Some of them are really big, like can you imagine how massive that would have been if it was complete? This is um, a pyrotized circular worm, like cast. Oh, nice. um, yeah, some of them are really, really beautiful. They're complete and they're really shiny. They need a bit of a clean, but yeah. they're you, Yeah, you find gorgeous. them by looking in the um, like little patches of pyrite where it's sort of like shining a bit, isn't it? Yeah, it's because pyrite is um, fool's gold, so. You look in the patches of fool's gold, the patches of like shiny metallic, um, sort of dark red stuff, mm. and you'll find them everywhere. I'm gonna go out tomorrow and add to the collection because I love them. Yeah. You you probably got some of the best ones here, haven't you? Yes. Hey, yo. Thank you. <laughs> well, how many paradise ones did no, you get? How about that? Okay, yeah. Oh, but once I clean mine up, they'll be just as nice. I was very happy with this find today. Just an absolutely massive. Uh, section of I don't know what species, but yeah, this was just lying on the foreshore. Um, yeah, I mean, you can still see a bit of the structures there. Do you know what species this would be? Probably not. Um, <laughs> that's something you have to ammonite. look online. Yeah, ammonite, but that's really cool. That's gonna yeah. oh, yeah. look pretty cool. This bit I got, this one is quite interesting. It's got um, uh, the sort of process where processes where the ornamentation would have been on the ammonite because some have like spines and stuff like that. So that's pretty cool. So that also, I thought I would mention Ben and I actually have a pyrotized ammonite that has another ammonite where um, right next to it. So there is there's this one. So this is my one. There's this pyrotized ammonite that has another ammonite next to it. Oh yeah, I got one like that. And then yes, Amelia's got. Yeah, I think a there's, a, there's a fair few examples like there that. There are a few where there are just ammonites up on yeah. top of ammonites. Well, it'll be where like you've got a big one, and from it dying, uh, small ones yeah. will get caught on it. Yeah. Yeah. So have a look at this one. When I found this, I was like, "Hang on, is that the the mouth opening of a ammonite?" And I was like, "No, no, that can't have been preserved. It's actually a small yeah, ammonite next, like found. near the mouth of mm. an ammonite." Yeah. Of course, they'll be probably washed in and like um, cemented, but I thought that was really cool. Yeah. So. Uh, I didn't actually find this one. Uh, some other uh, guy who was fossil hunting, uh, he, he must have broken it or something, but he didn't want this and he came up to me and he actually handed this to me. And this is a bit of a very nice ammonite. He said it's Asterosaurus. And if you see closer, you can actually re see the sutures here. Oh, They're yeah, really I complex. I've that before. That's amazing. Um, and if you look at sort of like uh, cephalopod sort of suture lines, they get more and more complex. That's how you sort of differentiate the 
uh, keratidids, nautiloids, and the ammonites. Uh, ammonites have these very sort of like leaf like, very wavy patterns between their sutures, whereas others are much more simple. But you can see all the rest of the calcite. Oh, very nice. And it's just, it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, yeah, hopefully, you can see the chamber, like cross yeah. sections there. As hopefully, well. I can get it cleaned up at some point. But I mean, it's. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. You got very a lot nice. in there to, to kind of yeah. clean and everything. Very nice. I mean, yeah, yeah. I definitely didn't find this. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, we've got so much in the collection. Um, it's been a very productive trip, I would say. Yes, definitely. Um, we'll be I back think. soon. Yeah, we've all been very pleased, I think, with oh, the... Should we show you the finds we, found, we bought? Do you want to? Yeah. Uh, I'm down. So, okay. Uh, yeah, we didn't just find things, we also bought some stuff. Yeah, so I bought this, I mentioned earlier when showing my fossils, I bought this uh, little ammonite. Uh, it's going to zoom. Yeah, look at that beauty. So you're going to clean that up a bit more. Yeah, I'll clean yeah. up a bit more, yeah. and then you have this. So a lot of times people will just disregard them because they look like they're quite fractured, but I don't think that's the case when it comes to some ammonites. I saw this in the shop, I had to buy it. That will clean up nicely. And then you also have... So I absolutely love... So I'm a vertebrate paleontologist, I love my vertebrates. But at the same time, I'm a massive fan of finding crab and lobster fossils. And now I didn't find this, but I had to buy it. So it's called... Thalassocena anomala? Anomala, yeah. Anomala. So it's from the... From Australia. Yeah, it's oh. from Gunpoint in Australia. It's Lake Pleistocene. I had to buy this. It's a lobster from Australia. Went from being Triassic. <laughs> so here are the claws. Here's the body of the, uh, the um, lobster. Here's the tail. And hopefully I can get, try and get this clean up. I'm trying to get... I'm trying to get familiar with this. Matrix might be. It feels like a mixture of calcite with some really thick cemented mud. It's just rock. <laughs> so I'm going to try my best to clean this out and see what um, happens with the lobster. Yeah. Um, soon, I want to see if I can get the uni's permission. Um, hopefully, get a GoPro uh, mounted on the prep tools, and I can. Like, yeah, that'd be cool. Does. Yeah, and I'm hopefully um, do some like. Time lapse prep, prep videos for you guys. Yeah, it'd be interesting to show the, yeah. the process of all of that. I just wanted to also quickly mention we've got some modern bone there. Yes. Um, oh, yeah. Sure? Oh, yeah, there's. So we think that might be a sheep uh, molar. Yeah, so and that's from right at the back of the mouth. We think this might be a dolphin cervical. Yeah, they were just on the on the beach. You find all sorts yeah. down there. Yeah. Obviously, all the, glass. Oh, the teapot as well. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, don't forget the teapot. <laughs> From the, the recent landslide. <laughs> it's very cool. It's. Oh, yeah, you've also got this. Yeah, Where's it going? I love it. So, we have also found this. Look how thin this is. This is a six pence uh, coin. Also found in the Victorian um, heap of rubbish. Yeah. So. And, and some Lego. And, uh, yes, yeah. yeah. Marbles. That's, that's for some my, reason. So, we've got marbles. <laughs> got some marbles. My favourite bit. So I, I, I have to these on. So we got some modern Lego. I think it's modern. And then we got some old Lego. I'm so happy. That's so cool. Some people do just go down there to hunt oh, through all the kind of rubbish and stuff. Yeah, oh, is that the one? Yeah, yeah that's the one I got. So hopefully, yeah, I can clean up that. That shouldn't take much work, to be honest. It's very nice looking. And then, yeah, like some of these, they're very dirt cheap because there's still in the matrix. Well, they, they are. I mean, and they only take a little bit of cleaning up and they're much nicer. Yeah. There's this one, which was, yeah, oh, much nicer. Very cool. Yeah, so that's a uh, Madagascan ammonite. Yeah. Um, See how sort of shiny that is. Great. Apologies, I, we don't know the species. Uh, unless it's it Cretaceous in age, weren't it? It's Cretaceous, it's Madagascan. But uh, do you. Did it come with a. No, unfortunately uh, not. Uh, but yeah, so I really hope you've been enjoying okay. watching our adventures and seeing us find all of this stuff. Hopefully we've um, many. Yeah, we'll definitely aim to have a few more expeditions around the country, maybe other countries even. Um, and we'll, we'll be, sure to, be sure to film it all. So thank you so much and uh, see you next time. Bye. Bye.